Paleoloxodon nematicus, also known as the largest terrestrial mammal to have ever walked the earth, was one of the few mammals that could punch in the same weight class as the dinosaurs. However, many debates that I've seen online have always put it up against the tyrant lizard king. Instead, I thought to change that up by putting it up against the T-Rex's greatest adversary, Triceratops horridus, also known as the three-horned face. Could the Triceratops be a similar or even greater matchup than the Tyrant Lizard King? Well, there's only one way to find out. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let us jump into this. Of course, we have to kick it off with their sizes. Triceratops was among the largest and most robust non sauropod herbivore of the late Cretaceous period, measuring approximately 9 meters or 30 feet in length and standing about 3 meters or 9.8 feet tall at the shoulders. It was undoubtedly a massive dinosaur. The weight estimates for this ceratopsid ranges between 6 to 12 tons, with the 12 ton estimate being a bit iffy, but I definitely think that they could reach their sizes. Its body was heavily built, supported by strong limbs that could sustain and maneuver its massive bulk. The immense skull of a Triceratops is one of the largest of any terrestrial animal, and it could measure up to 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in length, accounting for nearly one third of its total body length. Its body would have been covered in large scales that could reach around 3.9 inches. Clearly, it was a dinosaur built to survive the dangerous Cretaceous. Paleoloxodon was the largest prehistoric elephant and arguably largest terrestrial mammal to have ever been discovered. It measured approximately 7 meters or 23 feet in length when including its tusks, and it stood at about 4.5 meters or 14.7 feet at the shoulder. Similar to Triceratops, it had a large weight range. Lower end estimates placed it at around 12 to 13 tons, its middle end estimates placed it at around 15 to 16 tons, and its higher end estimates placed it at around 17 to 18 tons. Now, it might be a far cry from the 20 two tons everyone used to hear about, but that's what current research presents today. A weight of 16 tons will be used for this video as the higher end estimates are just too speculative and to be fair, it would make for quite a bit of a boring fight. Its body structure would have allowed Paleoloxodon to dominate its environment, shaping ecosystems through its feeding habits and interactions with other species. Now, basing it off elephant skins, it would have had quite a thick hide, however, not proportionally thick, which is why we can see rhinos, elephants and other animals being able to pierce their skin. But how how fast were these two creatures? Well, despite its size, Triceratops likely was able to achieve moderate bursts of speeds. Its strong forelimbs and muscular hind limbs suggest a quadrupedal gait built for power and stability. I mean, let's just compare its femur to that of a large African elephant. Clearly, there's quite a difference. It had reinforced vertebral columns, ossified back tendons, and other features supporting powerful leg muscles for solid movement. Studies which have compared large modern mammals like elephants and rhinos suggest that Triceratops may have even been faster and more agile as a result of a sturdier musculoskeletal frame and substantial joint flexure. It likely was able to reach brief speeds of 20 to 35 kilometers an hour or 12 to 21 miles per hour. Its low center of gravity and quadrupedal stance would have made it notably more agile than even Tyrannosaurus rex as well as modern elephants and rhinos, which was aided further by its lower rotational inertia. In contrast, Paleoloxodon would have been much slower due to its massive size. Like modern elephants, its pillar-like limbs prioritize weight bearing over speed. The smaller and faster Asian elephant can reach speeds of around 25 kilometers an hour or 15 miles per hour at a weight of 3 tons. Meanwhile, larger African elephants are slower than their Asian counterparts. Scaling this up to a 13 to 16 ton Paleoloxodon and it would likely be topping out at around 16 kilometers an hour or 10 miles per hour. Its agility would have been impressive for its size, being aided by its long limbs and short body length. It would be able to make rather quick movements when required. However, as the Triceratops has been put above animals like T-Rex and modern day rhinos and elephants, I find it difficult to argue in the favor of Paleoloxodon. All right, so clearly neither are too fast, but what type of weaponry did they possess? Triceratops was equipped with some of the most formidable and iconic weaponry of any prehistoric creature. Its main weapons of offense and defense were its iconic horns, including a prominent nasal horn and two large brown horns above its eyes. The brow horns measured around 1.15 meters or 3.77 feet. They were likely even longer in life due to a protective keratin sheath that would have covered them, similar to modern day bovids. This keratin layer would have increased the durability of them, allowing the horns to better absorb and deliver powerful blows. The nasal horn would have been ideal for thrusting and jabbing while the brow horns were suited for goring in head-to-head -head combat and defensive charges. Supporting its horns was the Triceratops' solid frill, formed by fibro lamellar bones, which when injured could reject 
regenerate after a short period of time. This structure offered superior protection for its neck and shoulders, shielding vital areas from predator's bites and a horn strikes during intraspecific battles. Acting as both armor and a barrier, the fruit could deflect attacks and absorb substantial impacts, making it highly important for the Ceratopsin's defense. Additionally, Triceratops possessed a powerful bite, an often overlooked but potentially devastating weapon. While not its main offensive tool in close combat, Triceratops could have delivered a crushing bite. Paleobiologist Tom Holtz has suggested its bite force may have even rivaled that of Tyrannosaurus Rex, adding just another layer to its formidable arsenal. Its bite could be utilized when in close combat where its horns were not viable. This combination of lethal horns, a reinforced frill, and strong jaws made Triceratops an exceptionally well-armed and resilient adversary. Then we have Paleoloxodon, and unsurprisingly, its most iconic weapon was its massive tusks, which have been estimated to grow around 4 meters or 13 feet long and weigh over 120 kilograms or 260 pounds. These were essential for display, offense, and defense. However, unlike Triceratops' sturdy keratin horns, Paleoloxodon had ivory tusks coated in dentin, which had a relatively low tensile strength. This actually made them more brittle than many antlers and even some species of bamboo. Though tough, they were more prone to breaking under heavy forces, making them less reliable in direct combat. Modern elephants will often fracture or break their tusks during not only intense fights, but also merely when digging around. Paleoloxodon likely faced similar risks, especially with its longer and heavier tusks. This vulnerability could limit its effectiveness in prolonged battles where sustained pressure might lead to its breakage. Interestingly enough, younger elephants with shorter tusks may have an advantage in avoiding fractures. Furthermore, their trunk offered versatility in combat. Though not a primary weapon, its strength and dexterity allowed it to push and grab opponents if necessary. The trunk could also be used to manipulate objects in an environment, providing a non-lethal yet strategic tool. Although when it comes to facing animals of similar sizes, the trunk is not really utilized, often being rolled up to avoid injury. A trunk would be unlike anything a Triceratops had ever seen before, so that could be an added advantage. Clearly, both were armed to the teeth when it came to weaponry, but which of the two had a better brain capacity? It should be no surprise that Triceratops was not amongst the most cognitively advanced dinosaurs, with its brain being estimated to be around the size of a walnut and a half, and its EQ being below that of ornithopods and carnosaurs. Though previously thought to have a great sense of smell, a 2020 study on its endocranial anatomy suggests that its olfactory bulbs were actually relatively small compared to other dinosaurs. On the plus side, the positioning of its eyes combined with large orbits suggests that it had decent binocular vision and depth perception. Additionally, evidence from bone microstructures implies that Triceratops had developed hearing capabilities, more so attuned to low frequency sounds. These sensory adaptations, while not indicative of high intelligence, provided Triceratops with the necessary tools to survive and compete effectively in its ecosystem. Unlike the Triceratops, Paleoloxodon likely possessed a high level of intelligence and advanced sensory abilities, comparable to that of modern day elephants. Modern day elephants demonstrate remarkable cognitive abilities, including emotional intelligence, basic tool use, and and social learning, suggesting that Paleoloxodon may have had been similarly capable. I mean, elephants today are considered amongst the most smartest animals, so I think that Paleoloxodon would have not lacked too far behind, especially when compared to something like the Triceratops. On top of this, Paleoloxodon likely had acute senses of smell and hearing, essential for communication, detecting predators, and navigating its environment. Elephants today use infrasound to communicate over long distances, a trait Paleoloxodon may have shared, enhancing coordination within herds and it does seem that their eyesight is rather poor. Still, with these traits, Paleoloxodon would have been a highly perceptive and socially intelligent animal, well adapted to complex interactions between animals and its environment. So onto our final subject, what type of animals were they facing? Fossil evidence reveals that Triceratops was no stranger to physical confrontation, both interspecific and intraspecific. Numerous Triceratops skulls and frills exhibit healing wounds, puncture marks, and fractures consistent with combat injuries. Notably, some skulls and bones have been found with injuries that only Tyrannosaurus Rex could have delivered, indicating that Triceratops was encountering this apex predator in its day-to-day -day life. Additionally, puncture wounds in the jungle and squamosal bones, matching the diameter of Triceratops horns, provide strong evidence for intraspecific combat. Such injuries imply that Triceratops engaged in head-to-head -head battles, possibly for dominance, territory, or mating rights. One specimen, for instance, shows a broken and healed brow horn, suggesting resilience and the capacity to recover from significant trauma. And the Triceratops was not the only big herbivore on the block, as it had some competition in the form of Ankylosaurus and Edmontosaurus. Everyone knows Ankylosaurus as the six-ton walking tank. 
it had armor covering its back and a club tail capable of delivering 25,000 Newton strikes. Edmontosaurus, lacking the armor and weaponry thought of of the Cretaceous, would likely be able to weigh up to 15 tons, with its most dangerous weapon being that of using its bulk. This type of herbivore would have likely came together in large herds. Now, although there has been no evidence of Triceratops fighting Ankylosaurs or Edmontosaurs, if we look at modern day herbivores, we see that although they might occupy different niches, once in a while they're going to throw down so it's quite likely in the case of Triceratops that at least a few of them throughout history would have taken on these other herbivores. Who would have won? Well, I'd like to put my bet on the trike. Now, unlike Triceratops, Paleoloxodon did not have any other animals in its region that could come close to challenging it once it reached adulthood. Instead, it likely gained significant combat experience with other members of its species, particularly for males. These battles likely involved using their massive tusks for pushing, locking, and delivering powerful strikes, while their sheer size and strength would have been crucial in overpowering rivals. However, if these prehistoric elephants did go into the period of must, like male elephants today, then conflict would have increased even more. More, which would have provided a gradual buildup of fighting experience which will be vital for their matchup today. So, who takes which categories? I have Triceratops taking length, external durability, speed, agility, endurance, bite force, bite effectiveness, weaponry and experience. Meanwhile, I've got Paleoloxodon taking weight, height, internal durability, stamina, senses, intelligence, and battle intelligence. So now that we've gone through everything, how would this battle go down? Who would take the win, horns or tusks? Well, the fight would likely begin with both giants posturing, testing each other's resolve. In nature, intimidation can often prevent the need for physical conflict. But despite the Paleoloxodon's clear size advantage, the Triceratops would not back down. Its evolutionary history of facing apex predators like Tyrannosaurus rex means it would stand its ground even against the most massive foe. Drawing from modern elephant behavior, the Paleoloxodon would probably initiate a mock charge, trumpeting and kicking up dust to scare off the Triceratops. However, the Triceratops driven by by territorial aggression and instinct would respond with a mock charge of its own, lowering its massive frill, aiming its lethal horns forward. While the Paleoloxodon would not recognize this unfamiliar opponent, it would be clear that this fight would be far from over. Naturally, the imposing sight of three horns and a frill would make the Paleo want to avoid a head-on clash and instead attempt to gore the Triceratops' flank with its long tusks. However, the Triceratops' superior speed and agility would come into play. Its stocky but muscular build in combination with its lower center of gravity would allow it to pivot and reline quickly, keeping its armored front facing the Paleoloxodon. This would force a head-on engagement between the two. Now the true battle would begin. The Paleoloxodon might try to leverage its greater mass to overpower and push the Triceratops off balance. This strategy would be difficult to execute. The Triceratops' heavily muscled frame and wide stance would give it great stability, making it difficult to topple. Although the Paleoloxodon did have longer tasks, the Triceratops possessed superior weaponry. Its brow horns were built for combat, thick, solid, and designed to withstand high stresses. In contrast, the Paleoloxodon's tusks tusks were more prone to break when subjected to repeated forceful impacts. During a direct clash between the two, there's a solid chance that the Triceratops' horns could snap or fracture the Paleo's tusks, leaving the elephant vulnerable. Using its horns, it would be able to deliver devastating thrusts to the elephant's vulnerable legs, flank, or even underbelly. A well-placed gore to the leg could cripple the Paleoloxodon, robbing it of its already limited mobility and leaving it in a poor position to defend itself. However, the Paleoloxodon's bulk and stamina would allow it to endure early strikes, but sustained injuries could slow it down. After a few clashes, the Paleoloxodon would likely be able to slowly shove the Triceratops back and would even be able to pierce its frill and lower hide region. Unfortunately though, the Paleoloxodon, though powerful, lacked the same type of experience the Triceratops had. Eventually, I think the Triceratops would be able to land a decisive blow to a critical area. Perhaps the belly or the joints would bring the elephant to the ground. Once down, the Paleoloxodon would be at the mercy of the Triceratops. In the end, I think that the Triceratops has the upper hand in this battle and would secure a victory with the high to extreme difficulty. While the Paleoloxodon does have massive tusks, studies like Poole's 1989 research on elephant behavior suggest that larger tusks alone don't guarantee victory. Dominance often depends on factors like aggression, stamina, and body size rather than tusk size. In many cases, elephants primarily use headbutting to assert dominance, with their tusks becoming deadly only when the opponent is already vulnerable, such as when retreating or knocked down. And unfortunately for the Paleo, but the Triceratops would be just too short to be able to get into good headbutt reach. 
Translating this into our battle, the Paleoloxon will likely struggle to use its tusks effectively against a healthy and aggressive Triceratops whose forward-facing horns and armored frill are built for direct combat. I'm not even sure if the tusks of the Paleoloxodon would be able to effectively pierce the frill without fracturing. Unless the Paleoloxodon could wear down or destabilize the Triceratops, its tusks would not be enough to secure a victory. Even if we use a 17 to 18 time Paleoloxodon, there would still be some serious challenges. The extra weight would give it a stronger push, but would likely lose even more speed and agility. Plus, overcoming the Triceratops' lethal horns would still be a difficult task. Still though, I would say a 5 ton weight advantage would likely mean that it could overpower the Triceratops and skewer it. I would say that the heaviest Triceratops could take on and beat Paleoloxodons weighing up to 15 to 16 tons. After that, the size gap becomes a bit too large and it doesn't help that our research on this species of Paleoloxodon is quite limited. So even with that, I can't say for sure. But this is just my take on the battle between a Triceratops and Paleoloxodon. If you agree or disagree, feel free to comment below. And with that, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you've all enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.